Hello, everyone. We're just going to give everyone a sec to join. Welcome back. We're just giving everyone a chance to join up and then we'll get started. That code that we used yesterday was SPLORE, S-P-L-O-R-E, in answer to your question, Milo. If you run Pico 8 and it's full screen, make sure you hold down Alt and hit Enter. On a Mac, sometimes that key has the word Option on it. And if you hold down that key and then hit Enter, it should make it not full screen. To make sure everybody's doesn't have it full screen. So again, um, just a reminder, if you want, what you can do is you can take Pico 8 screen and put it over here over the zoom window, over my zoom window, so that you know your Pico 8 takes up this part of the screen. And then what I'm doing over here will happen over here. That's totally fine. Um, so you should just launch the program. And um, once you've launched the program, I want everybody uh, to raise your hand when it's up and running. Okay, we got a lot of people. We've still got a few people. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, we're gonna get started right away today because I don't uh, want to have to take any more time to just get everybody set up and running. Um, so, if you still need help getting up and running, um, I don't want you to miss out. But I also we need to move forward. So, if um, if you want to just watch, if you're not set up and you want to just watch, that's totally fine. Um, I'll be happy to help you uh, after the class as well. Um, okay, great. So. Uh, we're going to get started now, and if you're at this screen, this is called the command line screen, and this is where you type in commands to Pico 8 to tell it um, if you want to save something or load something, or you can also run your program from here. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to type in save my game, and then hit enter, and you should see something like that. And what that does is that tells Pico 8 that what we're about to do is going to be saved under this name called My Game. Then later, if you want to, like, you know, if we go back to this, you would then type in, after starting up Pico 8, you would type load my game and hit enter and it will load it. So, but right now, all you need to do is type save my game. And that way it saves what we're about to do under this name. Then if you hit escape, you should see this screen. And this is where we write the code for Pico 8. If you don't see the screen, if you see one of these screens, that's fine. Just click over here and that will get you to where you write code. And again, just to um, brush up from yesterday, this is where you make the art for the game. This is where we'll draw the map for the game. And this is where we make sounds. And this is where uh, you make music. So going back to the code thing, now we're gonna start learning a little bit about coding and some of the things you need to know about coding in order to get started here. And then um, that won't take too long, but then I wanna, then we'll get started into actually making our game. So the first thing is when you're coding, you have to type in all the instructions that you want the computer to do. And there's two main things that I want you to understand. One is um, some simple instructions to the computer um, 
And the other is how to tell the computer to store information. So one instruction that is really useful to know is CLS, and then you put parenthesis, and then end parenthesis, just like that. And what that tells the computer to do is when it runs your program, the first thing it will do is clear the screen. That's what CLS stands for. It stands for clear screen. And now if you hit control R, or if you're on a Mac, you would hit command R. If you hit control R right now, you'll see it doesn't do anything, but clear the screen and then the program ends. And that's it. And we've hit escape, it goes back to your program. So try that and it should just clear the screen and that's it. Good. So this is called a function. And a function is just an instruction to the computer to tell it something to do. The parentheses are where you can give it extra information about what to do. And in this case, we don't give it any extra information because we just tell, clear the screen, that's all. Um, but some functions, you have to put some information in between these parentheses to give it instructions on what to do. Like for example, if I told you to drive, okay, that's kind of useful, but not very, because I haven't told you where to drive to. I've just told you drive. So I tell you drive to the store. And the part where I tell you to the store is where I give you some information about where to drive. Okay, so now let's talk about different types of information that the computer can store for you. So one of them is numbers. So let's say we make a, um, we type num equals eight. Now what this is, is num is called a variable and that is a way to store information. And it's called a variable because the information inside can vary. It can change from time to time. And right now we're starting it off with the number eight. So we are saying num equals eight. So this variable stores this number. Now this looks, a, this is a little different than what you're used to when you're doing math, because in math, you're saying by the equal sign, you're saying that num is the same as eight, but that's not the way it works in programming. In um, when you're writing code, an equal sign says, take what's on this side and put it into what's over here on this side. So I can't do this. Even though I could do this in math, I can't do that in programming. It doesn't work because that would mean that I'm taking num and trying to put it in eight, which that doesn't make sense. It doesn't math, you know, doesn't quite work that way. It's like saying, oh, eight is six. It's like, no. Nope. So when you're coding the equal sign, so we're gonna get rid of this because that's not useful. So when you're coding, the equal sign says, take what's on this side and go put it over here. So that's how to make a variable. Now variables can hold numbers. They can also hold uh, text. So if I put name equals quote Dylan. Now also um, one thing you should know is when you're writing in Pico 8, you don't have to type capitals. You just type lowercase, all lowercase. It'll make the words look like this. You don't have to worry about doing capitals, you'll, you'll start seeing some weird characters if you do that. Um, now the reason we have quotes is because this is a special type of information called a string. And it's a, called a string because it's a string of characters. See, there's a D and then a Y and then an L and then an A and then an N. And so they're all strung together. And we use the quotes to tell the computer that's what this is, is it's just text. Now you could also, you could put anything in here. You could put, um, I could also say, um, you know, let's say floors of a building. I could say floors equals quote nine. Now this is not storing, uh, this is not storing the number nine. This is storing the character nine, like the, the numeral, like, you know, the symbol for nine. It doesn't store, so I can't say like, you know, nine plus five, because this is saying the character nine plus the character five. So it would actually end, it would end up storing nine five like this. Um, let me just answer a couple questions here. So um, did you miss anything? Nope, this is all we've done so far. And how did you CLS parenthesis parenthesis? So I just typed in CLS 
and then put a starting parenthesis and ending parenthesis. No space in between. Like I didn't, there's no space there. It's just CLS parenthesis parenthesis, and that's all. Okay, so the other kind of information you can store. So, so far we've got numbers and we've got text, also called a string. You can also store what's called, uh, it's called a Boolean, but it really just means true or false. Like whether the player's alive, true, right? And it's called a Boolean because there was a guy a long time ago who figured out all sorts of cool math you can do just using true and false. So they named this in programming, this way of storing true and false after that guy. So true or false, oops, yeah, true or false, and that's it. And this could store lots of information. It could be, you know, game over is true or false, or it could be, um, there's lots of things. Um, one second, I'm gonna turn my phone off. All right, so there we go. Okay, so those are different ways to store information. We're gonna um, we're gonna be using a lot of different variables throughout our program, but I just wanted you to see um, how those get used. If you want to make me half my screen, just you can grab the corners of the uh, program and drag them to the right size. But if you're, if you, you see me full screen, you have to hit alt and then enter. Or if you're on a Mac, it's the option button and enter. And that makes the screen not take up the full screen. Okay. So now we're going to talk about, um, functions as a way to tell the computer what to do. So let's say we want to, um, print something on the screen. So I could type print, oops, hello. And then what this is, is this is a function called print and it has parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, we tell it what to print. And so this is the name of the function and this is the information we need to give the function. So if you hit control R or on a Mac command R, you'll see it just does exactly that. It clears the screen and then it prints, done. Now, we can make our own functions, and um, those there's lots of functions that are built into Peak 08 that you can use, like print, or there's functions for drawing circles or rectangles, or you know uh, pictures of art that you draw over here. Um, there's lots of different functions, but um, I'm going to show you how functions work. So. The first thing we're going to do is I just want you to be able to recognize what a function is. It's where you have the name of the function and then parenthesis, the information that you're, you're giving the function to do, and then the end parenthesis. And this is how you tell a function to do its job. So now I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call it uh, name is Dylan. Now, when we give print the information it needs, it doesn't care how it gets the information. It can get the information by you typing it directly, or if you have a variable that has the information, you can put that inside the parentheses and it will use that instead. So if I print name and then we run it, it prints my name. Does that make sense? So it doesn't care that I didn't type it out directly because it's getting it from this, which has it stored over here. Now I do want to show you something is remember I talked about variables having this name variable because the information varies. That's something that we can see like this. So I put my name as Dylan and then I print it. Well now after that, I'm going to change the name to James, who's my friend who's sitting over there. And then I'm going to print name again. Now, when I print name, I'm doing print name two times, but this time it's using Dylan and this time it's using James. So if I run this control R, you'll see first it prints Jane, Dylan, then it prints James exactly as we expected. So if you hit control R, 
it will run what you have on the screen. If you hit command, um, command R on the Mac, that's the same on the Mac. Command R, which is the you know little squiggly line or squiggly symbol plus R um, on the Mac and control R for here. Now there's another way to do it too. If you're in this code and you hit escape, so you go back to where it's got a blinking thing for you to type things, you can type run and hit enter and it does the same thing. Okay, so now we're gonna um, make our own function. So this is a function that Pico8 already has that will do its job for you. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm going to take a number, we'll call it num and we'll set it to um, eight. And then I'm going to print num and I'm gonna run it and it prints eight exactly as we expect. Um, what happens when you try to run it, Ariana? I have someone who said that it wasn't working for them, so I want to find out why it's not working. While she types that answer, I do want to let you know, it's really common to run into a problem and an error. Okay, good. I'm glad you figured it out. Um, so I still want to say this though. It's really, really, really common while you're coding that you run into an error and it doesn't work. So for example, let's say I accidentally forgot the parenthesis at the end of print and I hit run and I get an error and it, I was like, what, what does that mean? Right? Don't worry about that. That's normal. I've been programming for like 25 years and I still make these kind of mistakes all the time. It's just part of coding. It's just part of how, you know, you do stuff. And all it means is that, oh, there was a, there was a mistake in what we wrote. We have to go back and fix it. So how do we know where to go back? Do you see where it says um, line five? That means that's what line it thinks the error is at. So if you hit escape and go back to your code and we go down and we look at line five and you can see what line you're on down here. It's got it, you know, listed what line you're on then you can see, hmm, there's something wrong on this line. So you go back and you look, oh, we forgot a parenthesis. So we add the parenthesis, run it again, and now it works. Okay, I just don't want you to get frustrated if you run into those errors because it's just normal to do that. Sometimes you'll have to fix an error, run it, fix another error, run that, fix another error, and it just, you know, you just do that a few times. Totally fine. All right. So now we want to make our own function. I want to make a function that doubles whatever number I give it. So I'm going to make our own function. This is a custom function. And so in order to tell Pico8 that we're making a function, we have to write the word function and then the name of the function. I'm going to call it double it, uh, double it, just like that. And then I'm gonna put parentheses, and this is where it gets a little confusing, but I want you to stick with me. Then we're gonna say uh, A. Now what we're doing here is we're saying that I'm expecting one piece of information, and we just called it A because A is easy to remember. I could call it, you know, frog if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna call it A. And then we have to write end, and end means this is the end of the function. Now we put something in between there. Now what do we want? to happen when we run this function and give it a piece of information? Well, I want it to take a, and I want it to equal a times two. So what that's saying is, remember, this is not like math, where the, a, where the equal sign means both sides are the same. In programming, it does this side and then puts it over into this side. So if a already has, a, a value, it will multiply it by two and then take the result and go put it back into A. I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, Eli, to answer your question, um, if you want to just run the program by hitting escape and then typing run, that also works too. So you can just hit escape and type run and that also works just fine. Um, but if you're on Windows, you can just also hit control R 
Or if you're on a Mac, you can hit Command R, and both of those will work to start it running. Okay. So back to our function. So we have a function that I've just made called doublet. And if I give it a piece, one piece of information, it will take a and multiply it by two. But the problem with this is that once this function's over, a only works for this function. So we have to say, give back a. And return means, okay, when this function's done, give back a as the result return a. So it's kind of like when you're given homework by a teacher, they expect you to hand it in. So this is kind of like, okay, we're handing this off to the function and then the function's handing back the result of the work that it did. Now I have this function here, but it doesn't do anything by itself. It just, and you'll notice when we, when we run this, if I run, it just prints eight, which is printing num. It didn't do anything here. That's because we didn't run this function. All we did is we told the computer what this function is and how it should work. A multiplying symbol can be made by doing shift eight, which is the star symbol. Eli, yes, that's absolutely correct. The equal sign redefines what's in the variable if when you put it there. So in this case, we're saying a should equal whatever a was times two. So a will have a new value, which is what we mean by the value will vary. It's a variable because the value will change. So now let's use this function. So if we want to print num, we should, we can do this. We can say doublet and then in parentheses put num. Now I don't want you to get confused by these uh, multiple parentheses because that's something that you'll run into in coding is you'll have a lot of parentheses all jammed up together and you just got to kind of keep them straight. Like you know that this parentheses and this parentheses go with this function and this parentheses and this parentheses go with this function. So you'll see them all squished up together like this a lot but you just have to remember that it's just like in English when you have a lot of parentheses, you got to keep track of what goes where. And it's really easy to forget one. Like it's easy to have this and then not realize, oh wait, I don't have a parenthesis for print. You can look at this and think, oh, that looks normal and then run it and you get an error. And like, oh, wh what, what's my error? Well, if you go to line 12, just like it says, we see, okay, and then a lot of times it's a parenthesis error. So we have one parenthesis here, one, oh, we're missing a parenthesis, add the parenthesis back in. And now let's run it and see what happens. Now we printed 16. So it did our job. Double it. We fed double it our num and num. Now this is something that is good to understand. We're gonna make a variable called double num and we're gonna make it equal to double it using num. And now we're just gonna print double num. Yes, you will be creating a video game with me. This is just, um, yeah, so a lot of times spaces won't give you an error. Like if you put spaces here, um, it won't give you an error, but there are times where spaces do matter, but I will, I'll try to let you know when, when those matter. A lot of times I don't use spaces here because we don't have a lot of space. So it's a little easier to see it without spaces. Okay, so I want you to see what happens here. If I run it, we get 16. Because what happened was we set num to eight, then we made a function called doublet, and then we ran that function and fed it num. And then what we got back was the doubled version and that doubled version got stuck into double num, and then we printed double num. So just to go over how this flows, so the value of A here is in, or sorry, the value of num here is eight. And that gets sent over here to A. So now A has the value of eight. And then A gets multiplied by two, so it becomes 16. 
And then that value gets put back in A. And then A gets returned. That means that this gives back this result. So to the computer, this gets replaced with, this right here gets replaced with 16 because that's what came back from double it. And then 16 is what gets put into double num. And then that's what ends up getting printed here. I hope that makes sense because that's a really important thing to understand that what comes back from the function here is what then gets put over here in double num. And that's why this return is important because we want this to give back a value that we can then use to put into this variable over here. Yes, there, to answer Eli's question, there is a number limit. If you try to put in a very large number, it does not like that. This coding thing only likes numbers up to 3,000 or 32,767. If you try to use numbers higher than that, it's really hard for it to deal with and it gives you an error. You can use numbers higher than that, it just you can't expect the, the, the numbers to work out. It's, this kind of thing shows up a lot in, um, uh, in programming. I don't know if you remember the video uh, Gangnam Style, but when YouTube was first created, they thought, oh, no video is ever going to get like billions of views. So we can just, you know, code it so that we'll, we'll use up to a certain high number. And then Gangnam Style got billions of views and the video counter of how many views it has broke and they were like, oh no, we got to fix it. So they had to make it so it could take an even bigger number. Okay, so... Um, Sophia, what was your question? It says, what happens when it says function after you do command R? So usually, um, if you do command R and you get some kind of error, it usually means there's something with your, uh, some error, look at what line it says. And usually it, the kinds of things that I often see is I see people forget to put parentheses or I see them forget to put end. Um, or in here, like when they're running the function, I see them forget to put the end parentheses. So that's a lot of the types of things that you usually see people uh, make a mistake on. So that's a, that's a good thing to check. Okay, so I wanna show you, this is an example of making a function that gives back some information. Now I wanna show you an example of making a function that doesn't give back information, but still does some work. So let's do this. We're going to make a function, a new function called draw target. And what this function is going to do, it doesn't take any information. It just does its work is we're going to use a function that's built into Pico 8 called circ fill. And what this does is it draws a filled in circle. And this function takes a few pieces of information. First, it takes how many dots over and how many dots down, those dots are known as pixels, okay? And um, Hadia, yes, this is our first class that we're doing. Yesterday was mostly just getting everybody up and running. Um, so pixels are how many dots over and how many dots down. And you have to tell Circfill how many dots over and how many dots down. So I'm gonna say like 40 or 50 over and maybe 30 down. Now in Pico 8, there's 128 across and 128 down. And then you have to tell it how big to make the circle. So from the center out to the edge, how many dots do you want? How many pixels do you want? And I'll say maybe say like 10. Then you have to tell it what color do you want the circle to be? Now, if you go over to the little monster head and you look at all these colors, if you move your mouse over a color and look down in this corner, you'll notice, so like if I put my mouse over yellow, you'll notice that it says color 10 down in the corner. 
So that's the number of that color. If I want red, I go over here and I, it says color eight. So let's use red. So let's go back to my code and I'm gonna use the color eight. And that says this circle should be 50 dots over, 50, 50 pixels over, 30 pixels down. It should be 10 pixels from the center to the outside and it should be in color red. And then we're gonna do that again. We're gonna say circ fill and this time we're gonna say at the same spot, but this time a little bit smaller, like maybe like seven, and we're gonna color in white. So we go back over here and we find the color white and we see, oh, that's color seven. So we write color seven. And then we put an end parentheses. Don't forget the end parentheses. And then we're gonna do one more at the same spot on the screen, but this time we're only gonna do like maybe like three pixels. And then we're gonna do also color eight again. So what this does, this function draws a circle at that spot, that big, that color, draws another circle on top of that, draws another circle on top of that. But we haven't run our function yet. So let's get rid of this stuff. Let's get rid of this stuff down here and let's run our function. So we're gonna just say draw, target. And remember, it doesn't take any information. So we're using empty parentheses. And let's run it. Control R. There it is. Look at that. It drew a target on the screen. Now, the problem is this isn't a very useful function because it will always only draw a target in that exact spot and nowhere else. So we want a way to change where something's drawn. And if you want to change where something's drawn, well, you're, you're going to need a variable because you're going to need to vary where it is. So let's make it so that draw target also takes X and Y. So that's where we're going to call the two numbers that it, it takes. And we're going to change this to X and this to Y. And then same thing on all these other ones. So they all draw in the same exact spot. Now, anytime we use draw target, we have to tell it X and Y to use. And X would be how many across and Y would be how many down. Neve, yes, this is for a video game. This is, these are the, the concepts that you need to understand so that when we go to write the video game, these, are, these all make sense. So we made this function called draw target that takes X and Y. And now we're using X and Y when we draw it. So now let's run draw target, but we have to tell it X and Y. So let's give it, you know, say 20 and 40. And now let's draw it. Now 20 will go into X and 40 will go into Y. So that when it runs these circ fills, it'll use 20 and 40 for X and Y. Let's run it. Okay, we have a different spot. Now the cool thing is we can run this again, draw a target and give it new coordinates like 80 and 50. And we can run it again and see now it draws two targets and we could even run it again and maybe put it at 40 and 90 and there we go. Now you should remember that zero zero is up in this top corner. So it goes zero all the way out this way and then zero all the way out this way. And X is usually used for going across and Y is usually used for going down. Okay, so now we have two functions. This one gives back information. This one doesn't. This one just does some stuff. And we've seen how to use functions that give back information. And we've seen how to use functions that just do their thing. And both of them, we've made it so that they require some information in order to do their job. And this is how we can run those functions that do those jobs and give them different information each time so that they do slightly different things each time. If I'm going too fast, I, I, I want you to be able to, we record these, so you will be able to go back and watch them again. Um, and I will try to make sure I don't go um, too fast. Okay, so I, this question, how come sometimes you use an underscore and sometimes a space? So that's a very good question. And the reason is that 
sometimes you have like this is kind of hard to read doublet like okay wait what i have to like kind of look at it for a second but i don't want to space it out otherwise it thinks this is one name and this is another so which one should it use so it needs to stay all together as one word so if i put it in no space it's a little hard to read i can still read it but this one i kind of they're like really different words so i want to have them spaced apart when i look at them but I don't want them spaced apart in the code like this because then the code gets confused. So I use an underscore, which is the shift dash key. And that puts kind of a fake space where the computer still looks at this as one name so that I can use it like one name like this, but I can still look at it as a human and think that it's two words. I hope that helps answer the question. Um, to answer your question, yes, you can make random spaces. We're going to go into um, random stuff later, but it is possible to, to make random numbers where, the, where these would go. Um, that is definitely possible. Um, but we're not going to cover that just this second, but that is, uh, that is how it works. Um, so now, I, there is one thing that I do want to um, cover real quick. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave this on the screen. So it still draws these targets on the screen, but I'm going to make use of this doublet function. Now you can use your scroll wheel to scroll up and down if, if it gets too far here. Um, you can type functions directly in the command line if, um, like if they're already built in. Um, if like if I hit escape and type print Hello, that will work. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier to type them into the code and run that. Um, Milo, what's not working for yours? Is it, is it giving you an error? If, try to note what line it says that the error is on. For instance, if I accidentally forgot a parenthesis here and ran this, you'll see it says, oh, there's an error on line 17. So if I go and look at line 17, I see, oh, I forgot a parenthesis. And a lot of times those are the kind of errors. Or let's say I forget one of the numbers and I accidentally make a real one really big number. Well, the function just doesn't work. And sometimes it's because kind of like, oh, I forgot, you know, or let's say I actually put accidentally put a space instead of a comma. Ah, there's an error. And then so I look at, oh, it's line 17. And I look on line 17 and okay, I have both parentheses. Uh, oh, I forgot a comma. So I can add the comma back in. So sometimes you just have to like go and um, uh, go and check that. So um, it's not printing the target. Well, then one thing to make sure of is that um, that all of this information is correct, and um, make sure that when you use this name here, it's matched to this name here, so that these are exactly matched. And um, also make sure that you put the function before you use it. Because if you don't put it before you use it, then when you try to use this function, it goes, wait, what function? And it, it can't figure out what you're trying to make it do. So now I have one last thing I wanna show you here um, for today before we get into, um, oh, it says error near doublet. Um, well, Sometimes that can happen if you forget an end. Sometimes it happens if you forget the parentheses. Um, sometimes if you try to use doublet before you've typed out the function, it would give you an error as well. Um, so also, just make sure you have end um, where you should have end because um, I also, I try to make sure there's spaces inside my function so that I know that all of this is happening inside this function. If you leave it all spaced up like this, it can be kind of hard to tell where does my function begin and end. So if you put spaces in here, even just one space, it helps helps you be able to tell where the function is and where are all, all the things that happen inside that function. It also can be a good check to make sure you actually did put an end there. Um, so one thing I want to show you. So we have this doublet function and I'm going to say, um, there we go. Um, so we have uh, big num 
equals uh, double it num. Okay, so what this what is this going to do based on um, based on what we see here, num is going to get doubled by double it and then get stored in big num. So big num will hold 16 and num is still going to hold eight. So if we print num and then we print big num, you'll see even after we run doublet, num is still going to be eight. So I'm going to run this and you'll see there's eight and then 16. That's because num doesn't get changed by doublet. What happens is the what's in num gets sent to doublet and then the result of doubling that gets sent back. And that new number gets stored in big num. But num never gets changed. We just told it to send num up to double it to get changed, to, to get its value doubled and then give us what the result is. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so these are some basics that I wanted you to have in, for coding. Um, the truth is that Lots of languages that you will code in use these same concepts that we just learned. Even though we're learning them for this, for Pico 8, these concepts are the same all over the place. You have functions that you write that do work. Some of the functions that you write give back the result of what they did. And you have variables that store information. And the kinds of numbers that get stored in variables can be uh, or the, the kinds of information that can be stored in variables are numbers or text like called strings, if you remember that, or true and false is another one that's used a lot. And those get used quite a bit. Um, so what we're gonna be doing, um, we've got to wrap up in a few minutes. So if there's anybody who has any questions now, I'll, I'll take them. Um, but now you have the foundations that uh, we're gonna use in uh, writing a game. And I think that's, um, let me just check my notes. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I got everything. The character before the two. Oh, that's a uh, asterisk, which is called, um, uh, it's the star that when you hit shift eight, that's the time symbol. Um, and it's not an X, it's a uh, asterisk. You hit shift eight and it will make that symbol. Milo, we are working up to getting to making a game. Um, the problem is if I started in all the steps to make a game today, unfortunately it would be like, whoa, what is all this stuff we're typing in? It doesn't even make any sense at all. So um, this is all stuff that you do need to know to make a game. Um, and uh, so the game itself won't be running today, but tomorrow the, we're going to be, the first step we're going to be doing is making our game map and getting it showing on the screen. So um, that's the first thing we're going to uh, be writing tomorrow is how to make a map, how to make a game map and get it showing on the screen. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to get our player showing on that map. And then we're going to get that player moving around on the map. And we're going to work up from there. Um, my big num says 8 nil. OK, so make sure that you have up here at the top, you have num equals 8. And then, like num equals 8. And then in your doublet, make sure you spell this correctly and put num in here so that it says into get stored in big num. So, and also make sure that this matches this, because if you don't match these, it's gonna try to print something that it hasn't stored yet. And that's a lot of times why it will say nil. Um, we are going to try to do this class again, uh, if not next week, then the week after, but we're gonna try to see if we can do it next week because uh, we wanna give everybody plenty of chance to, to go through these. Also, um, we know that the first class is a little tough because mostly it was just getting everybody started, which we didn't plan on. We had, we had hoped everything, we would just be able to start right away like we did today, yesterday. So we are a little bit behind. I do apologize for that. 
Um, but we, we want to make sure everybody at least got a chance to get up and running and then get these basics. Um, so if you have any questions on these basics or you um, want to play around with more stuff um, in the meantime, so um, over here, let me, I'll circle it over here. So um, this right here is a, a whole zine. It looks, it looks like this. Um, oops, it's backwards, but you'll be able to see when you get, when you go to that address. And this has got a ton of stuff in here on how to use PicoAway. And it's got a lot of things in the back on, you know, like, um, you know, like if you know music, how to, how to turn that into music in, in Pico 8. It's got things that show you, you know, a lot of different things on Pico 8. And that's from that address right there. Um, I'll pull up what it looks like. Um, here we go. It looks like this when you get there. Um, and you can download it for free. Um, and it's, um, it's got lots of, uh, stuff in there. If you just want to poke around before tomorrow's class, it's, it, it's not required. Um, nothing that we're, that's covered in there is required. It's just like, if you just want to, you know, play around with some stuff before tomorrow. Um, but that's all we have time for this week. Great job getting through these basics. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can also email me at the same email address where you got your code and I will be happy to answer any questions you have. And I will see you all tomorrow. Great job getting through all this. And I know it's, uh, this, is, this can be a tough subject and I'm glad you were all able to make it through. All right, talk to you all later.